The biggest thing that came into Mathematica 9, or one of the biggest things that came into Mathematica 9, was the predictive interface. And Chris Carlson was the lead developer of the predictive interface. And Lou, you had a lot of time to uh, work with Chris on this. And very exciting new, a new feature, many elements to it. Show us what the predictive interface really is inside Mathematica 9. Right. So one of the key themes of Mathematica has always been automation. Um, and in the past, Mathematica's automation has sort of been restricted to, um, to computations. So comp you, you type some input, you press shift enter, you get some result. Um, and it's that computation that's automated. But the typing is still you know, something that, that's grunt work you have to do. Uh, and then when you get the output back, you just you have this piece of output. And maybe you can access it in the Mathematica session using some reference to it. Maybe you copy and paste it or export it. Um, that's how things have been for a long time. Starting in Mathematica 6, we extended this automation to, well, now the output is not quite the end of the story. We have, we have the ability to have interactive content where you can drag sliders around. Um, we've taken this automation to uh, the next level in Mathematica 9, where the output is no longer the end of your story. So we have several aspects to the predictive interface um, listed here, the suggestions bar, which I'll be talking at length about, the input assistant, and some other very useful features. Um, but the point is that, that this, is, this is automation that you, can, that you can use to immediately sort of get up and running in your Mathematica session. So let's take a look at the suggestions bar. Um, so in Mathematica, you, you type some arithmetic. This is something that even a starting user might, might type in. And you get, uh, you get some results. So the question is, what do you want to get back? Um, so what has, what has actually happened here? Mathematica has taken a look at your input and output, analyzed it semantically, run it through thousands of heuristic rules that have been, have been gleaned from Wolfram Alpha and a few other places, um, and, and produced sort of a top, I don't know, a top number of suggestions for, uh, for, for this particular input. Uh, the top four are produced uh, at the top of the suggestions bar, and many more of them are available through the, the More tab here. So, so this suggestions bar is attached to the output. If you, if you start typing some new input, note the suggestions bar disappears. You get some new output, and it comes back. You're interested in going back to the suggestions for this guy. Click, and they're back. Um, the point of the suggestions bar is to give you instant access. Well, there's a couple of main, main features that I'd like to point out. One is it gives you instant access to a wide breadth of Mathematica functionality without needing to know the syntax for it. So it serves as, as an advertisement for some of, the, some of the features that are available in Mathematica, um, but also as a, as a convenient way to, to explore those features without needing to, to have a trip to the documentation, without needing to type anything. So if we want to, for instance, I don't know, calculate the average of, of the elements in this list, we click the mean button, and, um, and what is the numerical value for that? So, so the predictive interface gives us at our, at our fingertips, um, without having to type much of anything, the ability to explore quite a bit of Mathematica. Okay. So some of the other aspects that of, the predictive, of, the, of the suggestions bar that I'd like to point out is that um, it's not always the case that there's a single Mathematica function corresponding to a particular suggestion. So here we have a complex number. Um, for some of these suggestions, the magnitude and the conjugate, these do correspond to single named Mathematica functions. Um, but the convert to exponential feature of the suggestions bar does not. It's, there's a one-liner that, that, will, that will do this for you, but Mathematica by default, will not show you that one-liner. It will just say, oh, you wanted to convert this? Here's the result. And if you're interested in learning about the input that does this, um, you can take a look in this way. So this is beyond just sort of a simple wrap a function around the previous output. Here's another um, example of that. So we have here a trig function of three parameters. And if you encountered this trig function in your, uh, in your trig class, you might, you might expect that the x parameter is actually the independent variable and that a and beta are some other parameters that, that you know you might want to investigate the space that they determine um, and indeed that is exactly what this plot button uh, also assumes so the suggestions bar you know uses Wolfram alpha heuristics and sees that X and knows that that is probably what you want to be the independent variable and it constructs this plot command wrapped in an interface command so you have an interactive widget for exploring the space defined by this simple trigonometric, 
the trigonometric function that you've typed in. So very powerful to get, to get sort of up and going, lots of automation um, involved here. Another nice um, automation feature is the, uh, so, so there are certain functions in Mathematica that are very powerful. The transpose function is, is, is an example of such. It's very, you know, you can do lots of things with transpose to, to rearrange three-dimensional matrices, matrices of any dimension. Um, but actually using the transpose function occasionally takes a trip to the documentation or a little bit of experimentation to figure out exactly what command, what, what argument you want to give. Um, and we recognize that this is how people work and the suggestion bar attempts to automate this procedure. So rather than doing a single transpose, this button brings up within the suggestions bar um, some of the choices that you might have meant. So here's, here is a summary of what would happen if you called transpose with a particular second argument. This is the result that you would get and these are the dimensions that you would see. So in this way, we've, we've taken you know, the, the busy work of typing all these in and trying to figure out which of them you want. And let's say you knew that you wanted this particular dimension set. So yes, this is the transpose that I want. Click it. And we have now the input um, exactly that we wanted. So this is, I'll, I'll point out that this is useful not just for, for novices, but you know, transpose, uh, even if you use it every day, you might have trouble remembering the subtleties of its, of its argument structure. So you avoid going to the documentation, and, uh, and this, is, this is useful even for experts. Another thing that experts tend to do in the documentation is to explore the space around a particular function. So we have, Mathematica has lots of introspection functions. We have dollar version, we have system information, we have lots of other related functions. Um, how could you possibly learn about these without going to the documentation? Well, that is now a uh, question that can be answered via the suggestions bar. The output to dollar version is a string, so by default we get lots of string predictions. Um, but if we say that we're interested not in the output, but more in the input, um, here we have now instant access to many of the introspection features in Mathematica. So in addition to dollar version for the version of the kernel, we can get information about your session ID, information about your operating system, and so on. So in this way, you, know, th you can think of this as a, as a C also on steroids. This is you know, a very useful way to explore the, the spaces of related inputs in, uh, in Mathematica 9. Another strength of Mathematica 9 is in image processing. Um, the, the version 9 features of image processing have been greatly expanded, and there's lots of wonderful documentation that you could read um, in, in order to come up to speed on using it at a very low level, um, very powerful functions. But what if you just want to get something done, something simple? Um, what are the other possibilities that you, can, that you can rely on? So the suggestions bar gives you, um, in this example, gives you the access, immediate access to lots of image processing functions. If we open up the More tab, we see, I don't know, maybe a total of a couple dozen. Several of these are also menus. So let's say three dozen different image processing functions um, at your fingertips without needing to go to the documentation. So let's actually try a couple of these. Blur, uh, quantize, let's say I want to try blurring this. Well, now within the suggestions bar, we have an interface for interacting with some interactive widget. Um, I don't yet know the name of the Mathematica function that does this blurring, but in fact, I'm actually doing it live. Um, and if we click done, let's say that's the image that I want, and we see Mathematica reflects back that yes, this was the blur function, and it has a second argument. If you're interested in what it is, you go off to the documentation and read about it. Um, but if you just want to get stuff done, you, you've, you've gotten stuff done already. Let's say that's not quite the filter I wanted. Let's look at, uh, I don't know, gradient filter. Um, so here's another interface for interacting with a radius. And uh, okay, so we have some sort of charcoal looking version. So we have a couple now of, a couple now um, variations on this image. Say we also wanted to look at a comparison between these. So let's say we want to dissolve between these two filters. Um, we want to compare this output with some previous output. Well, in previous versions of Mathematica, that would mean scrolling up and doing a copy and paste, or possibly you know, looking and see how to refer to the previous output. But in the, uh, in the context of the predictive interface in version 9, we have the ability to automatically populate 
uh, an interface element with all of the images that are appropriate to compare with this image. So instead of needing to copy and paste, we just come down here and say, this is, the, this is the image I want to compare it with. And now the result of the suggestions bar is an input that creates an interactive widget that uh, allows you to dissolve between your two filtered images. Okay, so again, automation is the key here. Um, there's another very common uh, way that people work that we can automate. Uh, so let's say that we have, I don't know, we start with some, some graph theoretic uh, expression, and let's take a look at its, I don't know, adjacency matrix. So this is a sparse array. Um, let's see, let's try to visualize that array a little bit, get a sense of what it looks like with array plot. Okay, that's a little big for my screen. Let's, uh, let's make it a little smaller. Okay, now I've done a sequence of steps here, and uh, one of the most common things you might think of to do next is, well, this is now what I want. I've gotten to an endpoint where I want to be. How do I take what I've done and roll it up into a single Mathematica command? And so the predictive interface allows you exactly that feature. Um, this, this spiral icon at the end, so, uh, if you click it, it will take all of the inputs that you've just created via the predictive interface in the suggestions bar and roll them up into a single input so that you can now have you know, your, your notebook isn't littered with a bunch of intermediate things. It's, it's, you've, you've gotten to your endpoint, you have a single function now, and you could still have predictions that, that run off of this. So if you wanted to continue on and export this to another file, for instance, um, you could do that as well. So there are some other things that I'd like to point out about the suggestions bar. Uh, next to the roll-up button, there is a button for sending things off to Wolfram Alpha. Um, starting in version 8 of Mathematica, I believe there was uh, the features to access the Wolfram Alpha API directly from within Mathematica, and this button will, will call those features with, with the value of the output. Um, another very important button on here is the feedback button. So Mathematica 9 marks the initial release of the suggestions bar, and you know, we're, we're still very actively working on it, um, but we very much want to hear your opinions on this. So if, if you're a Mathematica 9 user and you have, you, you're interacting with the suggestions bar and you have things that you want to see or you'd like to see removed, you know, we very much want to hear your opinions on this. Um, and then we have this minimize uh, feature as well to, to take it out of the way when you don't want to see it. Um, by the way, if you do submit feedback through the feedback feature, um, you might be surprised at how frequently you're going to get updates to the predictive interface framework. So it's not the case that you'll have to wait for the next release of Mathematica to get new predictions in your Mathematica. Um, the predictive rules are implemented as a data packlet. For those of you that don't know what a data packlet is, that's fine. It just means that we can stream out new versions of this um, from our servers that your Mathematica will automatically take advantage of. So you might get new predictions from one day to the next um, just by, by launching Mathematica and using it in, in the typical way. And so, so we, can, we can act on this feedback in a very sort of timely manner. We can make our heuristics smarter and so on. Okay, so, so that should give you sort of a, a summary of, of what, the predict what the suggestions bar aspects of the predictive interface are. Good for beginners, there's lots of, lots of richness there. Um, for people that are already topical experts, it's nice to sort of see similar functions to the functions you're used to seeing and rounding out your knowledge. And of course, for experts, you know, this isn't just a tool for, for, user, for, for new users. This is, this is very useful for experts as well, for the convenience factors and for, for you know, taking your prowess to the next level. So uh, that's the predictive interface. Now, Lou, you showed there briefly how you can minimize it. Mm -hmm. Can I turn it off completely? Sure, if you find that, uh, that you don't want to see this appearing after every output, even in minimized form, um, you can open up the preferences dialog and at the bottom of the interface pane is, uh, is a checkbox for turning it off. But, but don't do that because it's a great feature. You shouldn't turn it off. <laughs> we don't want but to it, but do if that. you have to turn it off, that, that's where you would do it. Now what if a user really, really loves this and they want to customize it? Is that possible? Right. Um, it's not possible at the moment. Um, we are going to be working um, extensively with Mathematica developers 
in order to make the heuristic mechanism um, updatable and so, so that it's a little bit simpler for people to use. So right now it's sort of highly technical and there's a lot of ducks that you need to get in a row in order to, to add new rules. But we hope to simplify that and, and, and release a, a, a developer API soon. Great, well, Lou, thank you very much. Certainly one of the great new features inside Mathematica 9.